All right, let's trigger a few Trump haters out there. So these next videos, the one I just, just did uh, a little bit ago, uh, and now this one and probably one or two more, um, only watch these if you have any interest in some personal things, um, just experiences I've had in my life. So we're not going into the scriptures. We're not going to be studying um, uh, anything that's... Um, spiritual i guess i don't know i mean there's it everything's spiritual right but we're not going to be doing the typical videos here so if if this please you know don't don't watch them if 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 at all it's just you know uh, we should stay focused on things that are most important and this definitely isn't that i'm mainly doing these for family and close friends that wanted me to to, to record in my own words these, and I thought YouTube would be a good way to do that. Okay, so just to finish up on the last video, the river, I, and I wanted to lead in with this. So, uh, and I think I've talked about this one time in another video, but, but uh, so after we had the big accident up on the river and lost all those canoes and had those injuries, a week later, a youth group came up from Salt Lake uh, to go, you know, to do the river trip, and they were only going to do a two-day river trip, and on that, in that group, was the beautiful young lady who later became my wife. That's where we met, Just south of Jackson Hole, south of Hoback Junction, and I saw her uh, the first time, and I remember thinking, wow, I need to get to know her, but I was an awkward 16-year-old, and she actually had to... Um, um, ask if she could come down the river with me. <laughs> so it was awesome. And I've been blessed ever since. So we met when we were, when we were 16, the summer we were 16. And, uh, we, we dated, um, we, it's kind of, we went to different high schools. So she went to Granite. I went to Skyline. And she dated a lot. I didn't date all that much. But the bottom line is, is when I got off my mission, I knew who I wanted to marry. And she um, graciously said yes when I asked her. And uh, we've been together and it's been awesome. We've had quite a journey. So anyway, uh, a lot happened when I was 16. I met my wife, my future wife. I had a, a come to Jesus experience, if you will. Um, where I prayed to God through Jesus and I felt like my prayers were answered and I really I pinpoint that as a turning point. Now, I still didn't do everything I should have done uh, as a young person, but I, I, really, I really felt like I, I could go back to that experience and know that God knew me and answered my prayer. Excuse me. So... Okay, so finished up that summer. I met the young lady that I later would marry. Um, and right after that summer, uh, my dad and I had had a tradition since I was eight to go up into the Wind Rivers and go backpacking. The early years, we took horses. We had, hor we had access to horses. My uncle had horses. We had some horses, and we'd go up and pack in and, and fish. But as I got older, I wanted to kind of explore and see some country, and, and we did that a little bit, and it, it, and it really, I got the bug. So that summer, we, we did some traveling in the winds, and we did about 80 miles. It was great. After that trip, I told Dad, I said, how would you think, what'd you, what'd you think about going from north to south through the whole Wind Rivers one summer, next summer, and, and, and even climb Gannett Peak. That's the highest peak up there. A lot of glaciers, really awesome. And I pro I pro maybe I've even shared this story, I don't know, but um, uh, it's worth telling again. So he, my dad was said, yeah, okay, we'll do it. So 
we started planning then. And there was an old, uh, uh, you know, sporting good, but not really sporting good. Um, it was Timberline Sports. And they were down on uh, uh, Highland Drive. And these were all hippie, roll-your-own kind of guys. I loved them. And my dad and I would go down there for hours. And they'd show us how to tie the knots. I bought an ice axe that later you know, in this story uh, becomes very significant. And I, uh, significant. I should have brought it in with me to show you. Uh, maybe I'll do that on the next video. But um, I, bought, uh, I bought his used ice axe from him to save a little money. He says, it's still good, but I got a new one. I can sell you mine. It really showed us how to do things on a budget and, and trained us and spent time with us. And we bought some things, but this was back in the day, you know, and... Yeah, these were good guys. And it was neat. I, I love seeing because my dad was, you know, in that age group that, that if you were, you know, kind of a in your 20s and it, you didn't trust anybody in their 40s. <laughs> my dad was in his 40s. And, and, and yet to see those guys interact because we had an interest in mountaineering is pretty cool. So we figured out what kind of boots we were going to need to be on the glacier, our packs, our ropes, uh, and our ice axes. And crampons, he, he said, you know, crampons are an iffy thing because you can, you can, they're definitely a blessing, but they're heavy. And if you're packing through the whole winds, you might want to, you know, consider that. Well, we made a mistake in not taking crampons. Those are the spike an apparatus you put on your boots and big mistake anyway we we studied we learned we had a mountaineering book we did all these things it was awesome um, I talked to two guys that lived in our area Dave and Jamie Thomas and I said would you guys be interested in doing this I said heck yeah so and then Dale Bolo great friend of my dad's and us and my family and Dale and Judy they were in the kids they were just they're, they're the best of the best they both since passed uh, my dad's 93 he's still around and Dave and Jamie I think are up in Idaho but I'm not positive about that but I think they're doing good so we we planned this thing it was going to encompass about 150 miles of hiking take us a couple weeks and we were going to climb Gannett and that was going to be in the first part of the trip. So we'd start north to, and go from the north end of the range up by Du Bois, Wyoming, and go all the way down to the south to the Big Sandy opening. So we had to drop a car off at the Big Sandy and then get in one car and drive all the way to the north end to get started. And uh, it was amazing. We, we didn't have a lot of food because, you know, you can only pack so much. I lost a lot of weight, and I was kind of a, not skinny, but I wasn't, I wasn't heavy, and I ended up losing quite a bit of weight on that trip. But anyway, we got, we got up to where we were, um, uh, uh, you know, hiking and getting used to the altitude, and and uh, uh, you come up to this place called Dinwoody Valley, I guess it is, Basin, Dinwoody Basin. And at the very, very, very head of this long, long basin bloomed Gannett Peak, surrounded by, by glacier. It was pretty ominous. It took us a couple of days to get to the base. We camped at the base above Timberline. And the next morning, we were going to make the ascent. And we had butterflies. We were all kind of nervous. Um, we'd learned some terminology. We, we learned what we were going to do. Dave and Jamie were going to rope together, and then Dad and Dale and myself were going to be together. So uh, the night we camped at the base, at that we got there, I don't know, pretty late afternoon, I guess. Uh, we met a group that had just made the ascent that day and talked to them, and they, they gave us some great information, but it made us a lot more nervous. There was an area... Uh, I think the French really were the ones that invented or, or uh, kind of perfected mountaineering. And, and so a lot of the terminology, I think, is French when it comes to climbing. But the Bergschrind 
is where the glacier separates from the mountain and, and begins. It's, it's a river of ice. It's a, it's a living, uh, moving uh, piece of frozen water that's uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet thick. And where the Bergstrand is is where the glacier separates and, and starts. So you have to get over the Bergstrand to actually get on the mountain. So every year it's a little different different situation of how to do that. And this particular year there were some ice bridges that could be crossed. And those ice bridges were um, um, somewhat down in side the Bergschrund and, and then you'd come up the other side. So it was great information that we got from these other climbers. So we started really early in the morning. I think we got up at four and we had a quick breakfast and we were on our, on, on our way. And we, we followed it up. Um, we just started and it's just immediately steep, very steep. And I was, uh, well, we, we headed up, we got to the ice bridge. <clears throat> it's by a, an area called Gooseneck Pinnacle, Gooseneck Pinnacle. We, we were able to successfully cross the ice bridge. And I remember thinking, this is gonna be a lot trickier going down than it is going up, which proved to be the case. So we make, made it through the, the hardest, trickiest part fairly early on in the climb. And we, we got over, got up by Gooseneck and we made the ascent. It, started to snow and blow and you know it's typical up there the weather just creates itself uh, but we summited and it was awesome and we did it pretty early um, I'm thinking maybe by noon we summited not positive about that took a few photos and started our way down so we're we're on our way down I was leading um, our group of three and I would cut steps uh, with my ice axe in. And like I said, we made the big mistake of not taking crampons because we wanted to not have the weight. Uh, things were a lot heavier back in the 70s. Um, backpacking hadn't been really perfected very well. <laughs> I hiked in Levi's and, uh, you know, cotton kills, and I, that's all I wore, I think. Um, anyway... We, uh, we started our uh, uh, de descent and we were right above the Bergstrom and it was scary. So I would cut steps and we'd move one at a time. And then the other, when, when one person was moving, the other two were on what's called belay. And those of you that climb know exactly what I'm talking about. And belay, probably another French word again. And it just, it just means you're there for the protection of the person that's moving in case they slip and fall. You, you are stabilized. You have a rope connected to you and to them. And, and you're there to um, uh, arrest, uh, the, the, or save, uh, protect the person that's moving. Um, <clears throat> we made a, a critical mistake, and I'll get to that in a minute. So I was going down, cutting steps, and we were right by the Bergstrom, which was probably a couple of thousand foot uh, uh, abyss, dark abyss, where the glacier and the mountain are separate. And it's, it's scary. <laughs> and you've got this steep ice um, side hill that you're going down and we're trying to get to those snow bridges, the ice bridges, I should say, ice bridges that, that were wedged in between the berg, or uh, between the mountain and the glacier. So I get down to a point, and then my dad moves. Now the the thing is, is you don't you got to make sure you're off to the side if you're below and you're on belay, you're you're on the. Uh, on e either side of the person that's moving because if they slip and fall they'll knock you over right so so if they slip and fall you want them to go to the side of you and then you would you would um, uh, have them on belay and you could save them 
but if you're directly one above the other, big mistake, big mistake. So if the person falls, it knocks the other person right over. So um, I moved, my dad moved, and then Dale moved. Uh, we didn't know at the time, but but Dale, I can't remember what he he ended up dying of a of a of a disease that basically took over all of his motor skills, and and that was starting to manifest itself in, when he was in his forties. He was my in my he was my dad's age, and and it it caused him to have difficulty coming down that glacier. And none of us were experienced. We this was all self taught, other than these guys, you know, the roll your own guys at, at the Timberline Sports, but, but Dale moved anyway, he slipped and fell. And he was working towards going to the side, but unfortunately when he slipped, um, he was directly above my father. And, and so Dale comes sliding down. Typically, if, if everything works great, you can, your ice axe can, you can make a self-arrest and you, um, you can put the ice axe in the ice and it'll stop you. And, and I, we'd practice that technique. We'd practice that technique. But this happened so fast. We had about 30, I think 30 to 35 foot of rope in between us. So Dale hits dad. Dad gets knocked off his feet. And we're talking steep. They both go sliding past me screaming fast so there's two men two grown men sliding down past me I have the rope tied to me that's that's in turn tied to both of them <laughs> well they're two separate ropes but we're all connected right and the ropes around me and then around my ice axe and the ice axe is in the ice about that much <laughs> about two or three inches <laughs> and these guys are sliding down and it's like everything's in slow motion I'm thinking if this doesn't hold we're in the abyss we're done it's over life's over I, I just telling it my palms are sweaty my palms are sweaty um, so we're about 30 feet above the Bergschrund, above this crevasse, above this abyss. I see Dale go off. And then I see my dad go, and he just does disappear. And I'm thinking, this is it. I'm going to get pulled right off my feet, and it's over. The rope held. Um, it, it, it was so surreal. I couldn't see my dad, but I could see where the rope, you know, went off the crevasse. I yelled down, are you okay? I'm okay. Is Dell okay? I don't know how much time went by before I yelled. Um, they were okay. I said, can you get stable? Cause I don't dare move. My dad said, I can get stable where I'm at. I can get stable. So what had happened is, is Dell had gone off and he was free hanging, just hanging there. And he was hanging upside down. <laughs> My dad was off, but had come against the glacier. So he, he was able to get into a, a stable, somewhat stable situation. <laughs> Well, my, what my dad did is he, he started swinging Dale back and forth with his foot. And Dale was able to get his ice axe finally in his hand, get right sided up, and he hooked on to one of those ice bridges that had wedged down deeper. Big series of chunks of ice that had wedged in there, and that's what we had to cross over when we got to the top. And that's what we were trying to get to, to get back over to the, to the glacier from the mountain. So finally, Dale got over where he was right side up on an ice bridge. <laughs> and, and then, um, you know, to be honest, I can't remember a lot, um, but I remember dad 
working his way back up to where I could see his hat. I think he had a yellow hat. And I remember thinking, oh, thank goodness. So I finally was able to, um, you know, relax a little bit. And anyway, Dale was able to work up to get on top of the ice bridge. Um, I worked myself down to dad. We got over, we got on the ice bridge and, and Dave and Jamie were above us. They watched this whole thing. <laughs> they thought we were goners <laughs> and they, uh, they were very careful and we finally got them down through that part and they crossed the ice bridge and we, we all met on the other side. We didn't talk much to each other. It was very w weird. Um, we we kind of did our own thing after that. It was it was it was it was it was really kind of creepy. So I'm I'm a 17 year old. Had an incredible experience climbing, and uh, and the descent. We got down to to base camp, very very blessed. But the next day we were going to cross over Dinwiddie Glacier. And go down into I think it's called the Titcomb Basin, I think. Um, and we had to go up and over uh, uh, through another glacier, and none of us were very excited about it. <laughs> and we we kind of did our own thing. It was like ah, I don't know if we want to be roped together anymore. <laughs> so anyway, we did it, and we went a full 150 miles. Uh, I think it took us a couple of weeks, maybe a little less. Um, we covered some miles, tons of experiences. My, on my one uh, foot, my Achilles tendon swelled up about like that, and I had to walk peg leg for for a long ways, um, just because I was on my toes so much on that glacier for some reason. I think it ruptured, or I don't know what happened, but we made it. Anyway. That was my 17-year-old experience, but that really shaped me. My dad and I, he, like I say, he's 93, and we still talk about it. Um, what, what an experience that was. And I, I almost feel like I wasn't old enough to realize how, how miraculous that was, but my dad knew, and Dale knew, and... Uh, it was, an, it was an amazing experience. So that's it. Um, the next one I'll be talking about is um, a trip to Alaska in December on the Bering Sea. <laughs> and, and this one's a good one. So we'll try to cover that shortly. But thanks for listening. Um, like I say, these are different type videos, but I wanted them to be recorded for family and friends. So... God bless, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.